Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. In this video, we will be solving the part 4 of best time to buy and sell stock. The problem statement is, you are given an integer array prices where price i is the price of a given stock on the ith day. Design an algorithm to find the maximum profit you can complete at most key transactions. So we already solved the part 3. In the part 3, we were given that we have at most 2 transactions. In the part 1, it was, it was given that we can only have at most 1 transaction. Now they are saying that we can have at most k transactions. And there is a note here. Note that you may not engage in multiple transactions simultaneously. It means that you cannot simply uh, buy a certain amount of stock and then sell them later. So you will have to go step by step. You have to buy one, then sell this one, then buy another one and sell that first before buying another one. Alright, so for those who have already watched the part 3, it will be very simple. We just have to generalize the idea. In that part, we were given two transactions, at most two transactions. Now we are given at most k transactions. So we can simply go on and generalize it. But for those who haven't watched that, let me briefly explain it. But it would be much better if you go and watch the complete video. It will be much better for both of us actually. But let me just simply explain. Taking an example when k is equal to 2, that means we have at most two transactions. Now let us say uh, for the first transaction we are we are going to buy a stock on this particular day and we are selling this stock on this particular day this is giving us a profit of let us say 100 bucks now this is another day and here the price is let's say p or let us assume that it is 500 so this is the price on this particular day and for the second transaction we are going to buy a stock on this particular day now, as we have already done first transaction, we are already done with this transaction and we have a profit of 100. Now the price that he will have to pay from his pocket in order to buy a stock on this particular day will be 500 minus 100 because 100 is the profit. So from his pocket, he's only going to pay 400 bucks. So for him, the effective price is going to be 400. All right. Now what we were doing, we were simply minimizing the price at which we are buying and maximizing the profit for each of the transaction so that we can get from the part one so I would suggest you to just go to the previous video see the solution to the part one then move on to the part two part three and part four because that's how the flow goes now let us go and see the code for the part three this is the code here we have two transactions minimum price one minimum price two the profit 1 and the profit 2 we are minimizing the prices and maximizing the profits so let us simply copy this and paste it over here now we are given k transactions so we will have k minimum prices and k maximum profits so let us create array int this is min price it will be of size k let us initialize this with int max okay let us create another array of maximum profit this is max p and it is of size k as well and this we have to initialize with 0 max profit of i is equal to 0 we are going to each of the transaction so now we will have to do this for each of the k transactions that we have so let us run a loop for int j is equal to 0 j is smaller than k j plus plus now as I explained to you that the profit made by the previous transaction or up to the previous transaction is going to be will be taken into account when we are purchasing for the next transaction so basically, uh, 
the profit made so let us say this is the uh, ith transaction or the jth transaction and this is j plus 1th transaction so basically the profit that we have made up to the jth transaction that much profit will be reduced from the price in order to calculate the effective price for the jth purchase so what we have to do is uh, minimum price that is min p of j will be equal to minimum of min p of j comma the uh, prices of i minus the profit till the previous transaction and that is max p of j minus 1 only if j minus 1 exists if it is greater than 0 so if j is greater than 0 then this otherwise 0 now to calculate the maximum profit that is max p of j will be equal to maximum of max p of j comma the price the current price this price is of i minus the minimum price the minimum price of j and finally we have to return the maximum profit made by the last transaction or till the last transaction that is k minus 1 let us see if it is working okay let us try to run this minus 1 so if j is greater than 0 than this otherwise this okay so let us put some braces over here all right so it is giving us correct answer now there's one more thing that we have to observe so in the part 2 I guess yeah in the part 2 we saw that uh, we we solved for the unlimited number of transactions it means that we can have as many transactions as we want now this part can also be converted into the same if k is greater than half the size of the array so basically basically if we have 8 days this is the size of the array so in this we can have 4 transactions at most 4 transactions buy on this sell on this then buy on this day sell on this day like that we have uh, we can have at most 4 transactions now if you are given that you can have at most five transactions it means that we can have any number of transactions that makes sense right so if k is given as uh, if k is greater than half the size if k is greater than prices dot size divided by two then you have to perform the same thing that we have done here in the part 2 so we can do this I guess we can create another function for this max profit uh, let us name this as helper function and we will simply call this helper function return help of prices if k is uh, smaller than equal to 0 or prices dot size is smaller than equal to 0 then simply return 0 let us try to submit this now and it got accepted so talking about the space complexity we are using big O of k extra space in order to create these two arrays the time complexity it depends if k is given as uh, if k is greater than half the size then it will be big O of n otherwise it is going to be big O of n 
for this particular loop multiplied by big of k for this particular loop so it is going to be big of n into k so this is it for the solution if you like the video please subscribe the channel and thank you